Sell now as Goldman Sachs is getting out. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And Goldman Sachs mentioned on Friday that if stocks keep going down, that they're going to sell $147 billion of global equities. Let's head over to Goldman where we pick today's story up. As Goldman Sachs tactical flow of funds for September beyond Jackson Hole, they announced that they estimate that their CTA or quant computerized models need to sell $8.3 billion worth of global equity futures over the next one week assuming a flat tape, but they gave a threshold on the S&P 500. And look at this, the long-term signal and short-term, one they needed to get under 4,105, the other over 4,091. Well, what happened on Friday is it blew through both of those signals. Here we look at the S&P 500 closing at 4,057 points, indicating that indeed these quant models that trigger and sell based on their signals are indeed going to sell next week. They also note that there could be some buying if there's a big uptape, but if we, as we just saw, there was no big uptape, meaning 46.6 more billion are going to sell in a big down tape, likely because their own machines are triggering these sales. But they'd also note over the next month with 68 billion to buy in an up big tape, but note that this 147 billion to sell in a big down tape with total systemic numbers increase 124 billion in a big up move, but a whopping 178.7 billion and if further, if markets head down, that they're going to sell. And they have noted that their machines have bought $103 billion over the last month. And the systematic funds have bought $118.6 billion over the last month. And that is a lot that could be headed all to the sales side. As Goldman notes that, of course, these machines, these quant machines, they literally move the markets by selling and buying such large amounts. And now, with the big move on Friday, they're all keyed up to start selling. And this is just Goldman's numbers this doesn't count any of the other firms that run similar models now what does this mean for the broad market well of course as you know on sunday we like to look at the momentum and tactical signals we'll start out with the s p 500 and now momentum is shifting negative. The RSI is down to 44.2. Now this is a momentum indicator. If it's above 40, momentum is positive, but it's been moving down. And if it falls below 40 momentum, then on the RSI moves into a negative position, but the MACD's already beaten it with a negative cross to the downside. We will note that going back to July, on 27th, Momentum Timer Pro gave us a golden signal to buy it open. We talked about last week to tighten up those stops if markets move down. And so at some point last week, you should have been stopped out. This trade is closed with the next downside target of 395 to 396. Again, this is if you're a trader. If you're not, if you're a long-term investor, this isn't what you're worried about. If you're a trader though, notably Momentum Timer Pro maxed out on the one, three, in month signals, a minimum on the six month signal. And keep this in mind, Momentum Time Pro is still free, but it is extreme at limited time. I'll put a link up here in the corner and description below. Some cool things are coming for it. So you definitely want to get in on that. But let's take a look at the charts now and see what we've got going on with SPY, because I want to show you where this thing is likely headed with this big move down on Friday. So we're on a two-year chart. We've got the RSI, the MACD. You see the RSI is heading down, so momentum is slowing. You know, it hasn't gone negative yet on the RSI. The MACD is telling you, hey, we've got a negative cross momentum to the downside. But look at the volume profile. You see that most of the buying and selling in the last two years is right at the current level, or just above the current level, because what's happened, retail Retail was buying this top. Remember, retail buys the most at the top, sells the most at the bottom. And we know this based on flows data that we've seen come out. And so where does this mean for the S&P that the likely next move down is between these two supply zones where I have these purple bands around this larger chunks of volume over the last two years. Now, if you zoom in these lines, you know, they kind of move a little bit, but let's look at the last two years. It tells us, and you can see how quickly prices move between these supply zones, telling us that the the next move for the S&P SPY is down to this 395 level, the top of the supply zone. And if it holds up there, or maybe it goes a deep, little bit deeper into it, if it fails to hold there, then it's down back to retesting 
those uh, July lows, and that tells us we're back to 372. So momentum now squarely pointing to the downside for the SPY. How about we take a look at the NASDAQ 100 or QQQ, and what do we see here? Momentum is also negative. The RSI has been moving down. It's now down to 43.1. MACD's registered a negative cross. Momentum time and probe. Again, back on July 27th, if you were trading the report, it told you when to buy. Last week, we told you to tighten up your stops. You should have been stopped out or maybe you got out next downside target 302 to 303 currently running four consecutive daily sell signals but with all this note of potential quant selling well you probably just want to get out of the way at least for the short term and here we see on qqq what do we notice the same thing volume profile over the last two years has been very clear where the buyers are at we can see rsi is heading lower we see the macd has a negative cross here telling us the downside to qqq is actually there's a little bit of buying support here around 303 if that holds then maybe you see a, a, a slight rebound. Otherwise, look for a move all the way down here into this 294, 292 level. And one thing I wanna quickly go back just briefly is I wanna pull up the weekly on SPY because we talked about what, uh, over the last couple of weeks of how this thing got really oversold. We can see this on the RSI, we can see this on the MACD. And I cautioned, I said, if this thing gets up into the low to mid 50s and starts to reverse, well, we've seen that happen before and it means a deeper sell-off is coming. So we're now potentially at that early stage of that reversal, something to keep in mind as we go forward here. Now let's take a look at the bond market because it's telling us some interesting things too. We see the 10-year treasury yields, they held support uh, right in here at this purple line and they bounced off it but i want to point out we have a left shoulder a head and a right shoulder forming and what starts to get interesting about what you're seeing here in yields is the fact that we have this inverted euro cur yield curve, we have inverted euro dollars futures curve, and we have a slowing global economy. And all those usually tell you that rates are headed lower. Now the consensus views are headed higher. A lot of these quant models are deeply, deeply short. Can't give you that data because a lot of it's proprietary. And the only reason we're talking about Goldman Sachs as well, it hit a major news outlet. So otherwise I can just tell you without showing you that many of these models are at their mid-range short or max short positions any move higher in bonds they are going to start unwinding those and drive prices higher so that's something to keep in mind as we go forward now let's take a look at tlt because it's something i want you to be thinking about is where these quant models are positioned at deep short positions and here we can see with the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond etf tlt momentum is negative but the rsi is now the first to move forward at 45.4. It's moving up and MACD's got a negative cross. We look down Momentum Timer Pro, which is looking at a proprietary set of signals, including the RSI and MACD. It's got 12 consecutive days of sell signals, but notably going back in history, this is actually a pretty, I did some reverse kind of mapping on this. And as of last week, the signals are actually say that there is a potential bigger, much bigger upside move when we go back and look at history on these signals of probabilities that bond prices are going higher are pretty big. So Momentum Tire Pro, pretty cool telling us that information. Uh, looking at this right now, you would have no position. You're looking at an upside target of 115, next downside target at 111. You're gonna wait until this monthly flips back up to a minimum if you're looking to take a position based on uh, momentum prime pro signal let's take a look at the charts and let's zoom in here first to the six month chart on tlt you can see it starting to form a bottom the six month volume profile all the buyers below sellers above so the next time this comes up and breaks this 100 day moving average this blue line coming down that is gold green light and put the pedal to the metal and get on that looking at the weekly this is important to see it is coming off a deeply oversold position and usually I mean, it doesn't you know bolt straight higher like we typically see with stocks it's not unusual for it to struggle in the early phase here and then take off and run and that's what momentum Tyrant pro is starting to tell us is likely to come now let's take a look at gold 
We'll start out with GLD and take a look at gold futures. Momentum is negative. The RSI is headed downward, uh, 41.3. We have a negative cross on the MACD. Uh, you'd have no position in this, but if you like gold, you're just waiting for something to flip here. We have five consecutive, that should say, yes, five consecutive daily sell signals. We have a max one month position, a minimum three month position, none on the six month window of Momentum Tire Pro, telling us that in the short run, it ran up, looking like it's reversing. Uh, where's the next? Upside target is still 164 to 165. Downside target of 160. Let's take a look at GLD here and see where it's going. And you can, whoops, well, this is not the only the weekly chart. How about the one year chart? So you can see it could pull back a little bit down right into right about 160 here. If you are looking for an upside move, uh, if you think we're holding here, your upside move is 165 right in here to this volume is what you're looking at. The bigger picture though for gold is, is, is a tough one to make because it's hard to argue that this isn't a broader topping pattern looking at uh, particularly when we look at gold futures, what you'll want to see is a, likely this is headed down to retest at 1687. If you hold one, two, you know, three, four, five dimes, well, it tells you that, you know, actually you got more than that, six, seven, probably eight times down here, you're going to hold. If this is a topping pattern and that breaks, then gold is coming way, way, way down. Now, what is, though, the trade of the week? Well, there wasn't one. It's a continuation of last week's trade of the week, and that is a dollar, because when you see markets come down, uh, usually you're getting stopped out or exiting positions, and you're not going to find opportunities. You're not going to find them all the time. That's okay. You know, you're not looking for a trade every day. You're looking for the right ones, and that's what we're hoping to identify with Momentum Time Pro and its screening ability, UUP, momentum positive on the dollar bullish here, RSI at 65 and a half, momentum, uh, MACD is Got a positive cross nine consecutive days of buy signals will just win we said to buy back in and this is something i want to point out is that you know a lot of traders make a big mistake of you know when they find a winning position what you want to do is look for opportunities to add in and that's what i've been telling you you want to scale up those positions a lot of people just keep looking for other trades the dollar has given you so many windows to build an ad and head higher so let's take a look at where this thing could go we see the next side upside target 112 on the DXY downside target holds at 28 and a half here on, of course, UUP. Let's take a look at uh, where this thing is likely headed because I know some people say, well, this thing is massively overbought. Hey, remember the macro backdrop says it doesn't matter. You can stay massively overbought and looking at the RSI, it got overbought back in March and look, price kept going higher. You can just keep going higher. It was overbought again in April, May, and back in early July, and said that way too, the MACD is pushing higher. It's telling you there is a bigger blow off move likely coming here. And even on the weekly, you see this nice trend on the weekly MACD is still heading higher. The RSI on the weekly is still over, overbought and they can remain that way for quite a while. So the upside here on the dollar is indeed pretty strong. And that's why we've been featuring it as our trade of the week and been talking about it for so long because there is still plenty of upside remaining from a macro perspective. So with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Watch the downside of the market because Goldman's going to sell. Bye now.